Okay, so now from the classification and the mechanism of injury, we shift to how to make a decision in the establer fracture management. And this really will be a very crucial thing of when to operate, when not to operate and which approach to use. Because that is the question which majority of people are asking on WhatsApp nowadays, which approach should we use and then we will be able to fix that. So these are the, okay, so this is how do we approach an acetabular fracture. We have defined the injury, we have classified the fracture. Now we decide whether we are going to do it conservatively or surgical and we will assess what are the things to be assessed preoperatively, various approaches and then the reduction in fixation techniques. That's how logically you go about treating an establer fracture. So first let's discuss conservative or operative approach. When do we treat conservative is when the joint is stable and the joint is congruent. So you look for two things whenever you are treating an establer fracture, joint congruency and stability. When you look for congruency, you have to look at the displacements of the anatomy, anatomical and articular structures which are if it is less than 2 millimeters incongruent, you can treat it. And the third thing to look for if the fractures and it is a column fracture that you look for how is the weight bearing dome of that establum. Remember that if the lower part of the establum below the cotyledonous fossa, that region, ligamentum teres region, if it is broken, you may not treat it operatively. It is for your satisfaction but not for any patient's benefit. For the patient benefit, look for the roof arc, look for the weight bearing area and that will decide when to operate and when not to. So let us understand what is the roof arc angle. The roof arc angles were described by Mata which is basically the area where the weight bearing is coming from the sciatic buttress going to the acetabulum going towards the femoral calcar region. What you do is you take the rotational center of the acetabulum, not the femoral length, the acetabulum, draw a vertical line to the center and from there you draw a line which is going to the fractured area and where the fracture crosses the dome. See this angle, if it is less than 45 that makes the cone, that area needs to be treated operatively because that is the weight bearing area of your femoral head, the superior anterior and posterior region of your femoral head which articulates with the superior part of estabula. That is the area which is going to articulate. Mata said you can go and treat it if it is less than 45. Then there have been some variations. Mark Varas has so, said that if the posterior side is more even till 60, 70 degrees you can operate because most of the posterior articular area is used whenever we are using our hip joint which is in flexion. So the posterior part is more involved, so you can go and the roof arc is around 60-70 on the posterior side, then you can still operate. Remember this has to be taken in all the three views, the Jude views, the internal external oblique and the AP. You calculate this angle in all the three views, if in any angle it is more than 45, if it is less than 45 in any of those angles, that makes it an indication to operate. So let us see some examples. Like this fracture, if you see it appears to be congruent, it is stable, it is only the column fracture. So this can be treated conservatively. A fracture, very small fracture of the posterior wall, a flake of it, look for the stability. If it is stable and congruent, it still can be treated conservatively. This is a fracture, a transverse fracture for that matter. However, if you get the x-rays out of traction, draw the roof arcs, see it is more than 45 degrees in AP, internal oblique and in external obliques, it is more than 45 degree in all the three planes. Even if it is transverse, this patient was treated conservatively and this is the subsequent follow up for six months and now up to one year, which is completely fine and the patient is having good functional outcome. You can see all the three views, it still remains in the proper place. So when you treat conservatively, you can give bed rest, Skeletal traction plus minus I many a times do not give initially for the pain relief and then within 10 days we remove it, start mobilizing early, weight bearing is delayed up to 6 weeks to 8-12 weeks but you can treat many of these fractures which are outside the roof arc conservatively. When do we operate then? The benefits are stable reconstruction and long term we can delay at least 
if not avoid completely the post traumatic arthritis remember our aim for operating an acetabular fracture is to achieve anatomical reduction and stabilization but don't forget the last line with a low complication rate we should not be operating and giving a bad result to the patient because then the subsequent surgeries are also going to be in trouble because of infection and the fibrosis how do you evaluate you look for the patient's age look for whether it's a polytrauma situation this came i was out we said okay let's operate upon it but i told them to look at the patient and this was his condition he had fallen from a window the window pan pain had also fallen along with him he had a huge morale level going on the posterior gluteal region right up to the scapula lot of glass pieces were inside the stitched wound and we need to look at the soft tissue also before you go in for surgery we did have to operate upon it but we had some issues regarding his wound complications we had to debride it and then close it because soft tissue also will play a role just don't look at x-ray and ct look at the patient in large and continuous and its soft tissues to decide when to operate training is paramount to make decision making and this cadaveric and other cadaveric workshops which you attend will help you in getting the experience of surgical approach and the tips and tricks for the reduction technique which is so important and why is it important is because of this this is mata's first 100 surgical cases you can look how much unsatisfactory reductions he got in the first 50 cases nearly more than 50% cases were bad however and if the anatomical reduction is not achieved you can see that the outcomes are pretty bad if you get articular reduction of more than 3 mm incongruity your results of fair and poor are nearly 50% so you have to be extremely precise in treating an acetabular fracture you cannot accept chalta hai attitude of us saying that ye chal jayega because it will never work within 6 months the patient will come back to you with arthritis and failure and it is going to go out and give a bad name to the fixation of acetabulum and give a good name for the arthroplasty fractures ideal time for fixation i am giving you some points which you will be requiring for the decisions ideal time is 5 to 7 days nowadays people are coming down 3 days as soon as the patient gets stabilized you can go and operate upon it had to start only from me here <laughs> so anyways i'll stop it right here after 1 minute and surgical approach are the three approaches cockerlingenbeck ilioinguinal and the modified stopa which are normally used nowadays when the fracture is of single column or a wall you can treat it from that approach cockerlingenbeck gives you from posterior side so all wall fractures and posterior column can be treated from here the entire approach is not only the ilioinguinal but the other ones which are there which will be subsequently told can take care of all the anterior column fractures i just dwell upon this because this is the crucial i get so many calls only for this transverse t shaped and both column fractures which approach to use because here both the columns are fractured you do not know whether you want to go anterior or posterior so just for the benefit these are some things i feel say that they should be individualized as per the fracture pattern and the surgeon's experience you should be doing what you are proficient in just a tip if the displacements are more on the posterior side go through posterior first if it is anteriorly most of the displacements go anterior if you are not satisfied with one side that you are going and you are able to fix and you are not getting an atmical achievement getting it go for the dual approach there is no hesitation in going for dual approach in the initial settings or the initial experience because your aim is not to say that i can do it from a single approach your aim is to get an anatomical congruity of the acetabular joint which will be beneficial for the patient so look for that see where the displacements and the roof arcs are involved and then go from that column that helps moreover your personal preferences also come after the displacements and the roof arcs are taken into considerations so invariably transverse and transverse posterior wall are gone from posterior side associated both columns are gone from ilioinguinal and stopas and in the later cases you go from extended iliofemoral the t types are the ones which can be treated both from single side or from dual side because you need to get an atmical reduction of both the columns and finally look at 
elderly patients which are increasing in our population and having a stabular fracture. Look at the gull signs, the marginal impaction on the anterior side. These are bad prognostic markers. Was fixed but failed within one and a half years. And when we did the arthroplasty for him, you can see how the head has totally been eroded because in elderly patients, the anterior marginal impaction will cause arthritis very fast. Look at for the prognosis. Know the prognosis because in the initial time when you are operating on patients, you should get the good patients and get good results. So just finally, look at this. The worst fractures which bad outcomes are the ones which you are going to operate the first, which are posterior wall involvements. They are usually the first fractures which you operate. So the transverse with posterior wall, posterior column with posterior wall, and the posterior wall isolated fractures in elderly are the ones which have got the worst prognosis. This is Letourneau's paper and his in the textbook. So go about choosing your patient well in the initial setting and once you have gained experience, then only go for complex fractures. The take home is appropriate oper oper operative indication should be taken. Look which can be treated conservatively, which needs operative. Limb and life-threatening injuries need to be taken first. Well resuscitated patient, complete radiological workup needs to be done beforehand. Understand the fracture pattern and then prepare reduction plan. Good results will come only and only when you have an anatomical and a congruent reduction. Thank you.